Good day, I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Proposed fines of up to $10 million are being considered to deter pollution and protect water resources and habitats. In the new financial year, amendments will be brought to Parliament to raise the fines for pollution under the Natural Resources Conservation Authority NRCA Act and the Wildlife Protection Act. The new cap will be a maximum of $5 million under both pieces of legislation for breaches by individuals and $10 million for bodies corporate. During his budget presentation last week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the current fines were not sufficient to deter polluters who were in some cases rogue developers. That's a substantial impact. Madam Speaker, the relationship between sound environmental management and the health and resilience of our water supply is obvious. So today, I'm happy to table Jamaica's new watershed policy. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has charged the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, to develop a policy that would ban the discharge of any waste or effluent into the Rio Cobre. Mr. Holness says this is a very important step towards protecting the water source, along with the development of the Rio Cobre water treatment plant now being built. He reveals that consultation has started with businesses in the area. It's not something that you could do overnight because uh, along the banks of the Rio Cobre are uh, many establishments which have been there for years and which have predated many of our legislation. So the process of consultation has started. It is imperative that this be done. We have uh, put in place uh, a new water treatment facility, and therefore we must protect that body of water. Still on the environment, the government will continue to enforce several measures to contain pollution from plastics and introduce a further ban in June. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says pollution from solid waste is complex, as much of it is generated from economic activities, but he asserts that through commitment, strides are being made in this area. These include working to complete the national policy on the management of single-use plastics and beginning the separation of plastics at all government facilities this financial year. Jamaica will also enter phase four of the ban on some plastic materials on June 1 of this year. This phase will include a ban on the manufacture, import and distribution of single-use plastic lunch boxes and on personal care products using microplastics. Mr. Holness says significant progress is being made in the collection of plastic bottles for recycling, which has moved from 60 million five years ago to 278 million bottles being collected in 2023. We will continue to work with the National Solid Waste Management Authority and Recycling Partners of Jamaica to ramp up collection for recycling. The Prime Minister adds that Jamaica is happy with the International Negotiating Committee's progress towards developing a global plastic treaty. In other news, government will be establishing a trust fund for PATH beneficiaries and wards of the state born on or after Jamaica's 60th anniversary, August 6, 2022. The Jamaica 60 Hope Children Trust Fund was announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during his recent budget presentation. He says the idea behind the program is to give children a financial head start to approach adulthood. The Hope for Children Trust Fund will provide each eligible child with a long-term savings account funded through annual contributions from the government. Parents, guardians, and other donors will also be able to make deposits into the account for the future benefit of any specific child. The accumulated funds, including interest, will be accessible on or after the child's 18th birthday. The trust fund will be administered by the National Insurance Fund or private insurance companies. The Registrar General's Department, RGD, will be rolling out the first batch of Braille certificates on April 2 to ensure equal access to essential documents by the visually impaired community. The update came from Chief Executive Officer Charlton McFarlane at a JIS think tank recently. This will enable our members from the visually impaired community to be able to access and actually read and interpret and know directly 
the information that is contained on their vital certificates. Mr. McFarlane, who points out that this is the first time the RGD's certificates will be produced in another language, says it is something the visually impaired community is looking forward to. It affords them the type of independence, you know, to be able to, to read and understand their document, to be able to fact check, sorry, fact check the information that is contained for them um, by the Registrar General's Department. And finally, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is reporting that approximately 100,000 tests have been conducted on persons across the island through its Know Your Numbers campaign. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says that this is encouraging as the ministry strives to do 500,000 screenings in approximately two years. He was speaking at the 7th Know Your Numbers campaign event recently. Dr. Tufton says the screenings for the non-communicable diseases, NCDs, provide data for analysis to determine the health status of the population. It also provides for follow-up interventions for persons. I am very pleased. I think the effort is justified by the people participating and the conditions we're discovering and the follow-up that is taking place. And it also impacts positively the crowding out of our hospitals and accident and emergency. Because if we intervene early, we avoid people getting into a crisis situation. There are people out there who don't know the condition they have. And that's why we keep reminding people, do your annual physical. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching.